Well, folks, very special guest back. This man hasn't been with us since episode nine. Episode nine. How long ago was that, eh, Rob? This man... Two years ago? A few years ago. He's a former Ottawa Senator, New York Ranger. He was a Red Wing. Uh, He went... Now he plays overseas. Well, his first stop overseas, he played for the Malmo Red Hawks over in Sweden. Now he's currently in his second year in Germany with the Augsburger Panthers. Let's welcome back to the show our boy, Matt Pumple. Matt, what's up, dude? Long time no talk. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me back. We were uh, we were trying there, and the schedules weren't lining up. And then um, in the summertime, I don't I, I try to avoid hockey stuff if I can. But uh, it's good to be back now. Yeah. You're a ghost in us. Don't lie. Yeah, he was I talking. saw you every week. <laughs> you were drinking my beers. You were drinking my beers every week. I saw you. Yeah. Oh, Rob was drinking your beers every week. Eh? Oh. Yeah. No, he drinks the Heineken, that <laughs> shit ass beer. Pumps, you drink Heineken? Oh, I do. yeah. He's I a kid rock do. fucking wannabe. <laughs> kid. All those guys, yeah, yeah. That's why you got to bring Heineken because all those guys, they don't like Heineken. So yeah, they'll drink it. They're going to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, no beer will be safe around Rob if it's cold. It's done. That's true. And subs I hear recently too aren't that safe. Well, really? yeah. Wait, no. I, did you hear about <laughs> this story? <laughs> what See, the thing was is driver. that. Jordan, Jordan was in Leamington, and there's no Quiznos around here. So I asked Lou to pick me up a, a Quiznos uh, chicken carbonara. He did. I bought him a beer. He didn't mention that. <laughs> I know it doesn't compare in price. I should have bought him a couple of beers <laughs> because they're like freaking $15 subs, right? Oh, that's funny, though. So what have you been doing, man? How's life o- overseas? Yeah, it's good. Um, this is my second year here. It's a great city. Um, was really surprised by, uh, everything when I first came over here last year and, um, yeah, decided to come back this year. It's a little bit of a different start in uh, preseason. I, I tore my meniscus root in my knee, so I had surgery on that. So I'll be out probably for another, I don't know exact timeline, but another uh, little while, but it could have been a lot worse, I guess could have been the year, but I'll still get, uh, you know, over half, half the year in. So. I was spreading rumors that you're in rehab, but it was like rehabilitating your knee, not uh, yeah. alcoholism. Because yeah. 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 I didn't see you there. That's why you knew where I was. <laughs> I was running the program. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's funny. Now, how did you get hurt? Did you get hit or was it just like... Yeah, it was a, it was a, it, it rubbed out a little bit, but innocent. It was more towards the boards and my foot kind of got caught in the boards and my oh. knee went forward and my body went back. So uh, it was re- a really awkward fall, more or less. It wasn't really anything to do with the hit. Like, it wasn't dirty or, uh, or anything like that. And then um, I knew right away something something was was not right. And um, obviously, you think the the way worse, which uh, I guess it was kind of in the middle where you, where you still need surgery, but not uh, a big ligament or anything that, that puts you out for seven to nine months, more more uh, in the three to three and a half month range. Still though, fuck you. You had another guy on your team you had something very similar too, didn't you? Um, he yeah, he uh just had like a little cleanup. He was all he. It was a meniscus thing, but um, the way mine is, it's a little bit it, uncommon in a sense. Like it was the root of it where it like attaches to the bone, where uh, most meniscus tears are just kind of uh they can trim up or or just kind of take out little parts of it, and, and you're good once you're all healed up in, in a few weeks. But this, it's like. You have to get uh, good blood flow to the area. It's just an, an awkward spot in a sense. That's why it mm-hmm. takes so longer. I was just glad that it like wasn't anything like super, super, super bad. Because like, right away, yeah. Because like, because Rob was like pumps had to have like freaking surgery on his knee, and the first thing I thought was like no. Like I was thinking like super long term. You know what I mean? Because anytime, yeah, like most anytime guys you hear about your knee, shit, it's yeah. always like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that that was a sense where I was. I was kind of lucky and and uh this is my second week walking and I was on crutches for six weeks which was like the the worst part of the whole process probably yeah. because it's such a pain to go anywhere and up and down stairs and all that but that's uh yeah feeling feeling pretty good now it feels good to be kind of moving around normally and and uh yeah no no in, in the future will this be a problem like as you get older no and that's exactly why they like years ago you guys probably hear of uh like people just taking the meniscus out and, and that's what they used to do. But at 40 and 50 now, they're realizing when they do that, then it's bone on bone for a lot of years when you keep playing. So you get arthritis in your knee and 
um, people's knees are acting up when they're done playing, which is probably a lot of former hockey, not even just former athletes, basketball players and stuff have, I think from, from that. So now they just kind of repair it. So it goes back to normal in a sense where it's uh, a lot more better long-term. Mm-hmm. So that, that was uh, kind of what I learned throughout the whole thing. And then when they said that, they're like, you want to be able to spend a golf club. Not that I can now, but you want to play when you're 50 and, and, uh, so well, hell yeah, like, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> you got you, you got to bend over. Got to come back and play in the beer league with Lou and Warren Coots there. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Are, are you playing? You guys are playing too, aren't you? Yep. You guys don't play together, but you play no. on. You guys play separately. Yeah. Uh, Friday nights in in Essex at like ten thirty. Play with the Spence boys. You know, you remember the Spence. That's you know a tough. Spence? That's a tough time. It is, especially <laughs> after a meeting. That's it. <laughs> You're going oh, yeah, from Joe's. Yeah, Joe's you guys all day. You get to Joe's at. He gets to Joe's for breakfast usually, and then he's, he's going for 10 o'clock to uh... – Goes to Joe's for breakfast. Yeah, but you're there every day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just play Sunday afternoons out in, like, uh, freaking Harrow there, 35 and over. So I'm with all all the old lads. It's fun, though. We drink a yeah, lot of beer, yeah. so that's all – That's a good time. Matters. Sunday afternoon's not bad then. The only part that sucks is you're missing a lot of football, though. Yeah, I guess that's right, yeah. So we're always so like looking like at our phone. My one o'clock game is actually at seven here. So you're waiting all day for the one o'clock game. And then I can't watch the, uh, the other game start at like two in the morning here. So oh. uh, the football is, is not, uh, not ideal, but that's all right. What about golf? You're, you're not missing the Lions. Or? You're not missing anything there. No, you're not missing shit. Oh, terrible. I've, I've seen a couple games, but they, uh, they put up some big numbers in mm-hmm. a couple games, but they, uh, I think they still lost the one. And last mm-hmm. week they had by before that they were, they lost bad, I think. Right? Yeah, put up forty and lose by three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that should, one, that should yeah, be happening. One, when you when you lose forty eight to forty five, like something's going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was not like is hey, there a defense out there? Like are these guys just running down the field by themselves? So they're third in the league in points scored, but they're running away with points like scored on them. So, so don't yeah, their D was last in the league last year too. Yeah, so it's not good. It's not good. Hey, Pumps, when are you back on the ice or are you back on? Uh, I'm not back on the ice yet. Um, so every year, uh, the European team ha- the European teams leagues have a break. So in November, there's a break. So after that, I'll go on the ice. I think it's on the – we don't play a game from the 6th to the 18th. We're off for five days totally, and guys go and travel and stuff. So I'll be on, on the ice after that. So next – on Monday, it's eight weeks. They, won't, they, wouldn't, they weren't going to know an exact timeline until eight weeks, so I'll know more – Mm-hmm. come forward here because everyone heals a little bit differently but i i think i'm probably doing uh right on track or a little bit ahead schedule are, are you are you doing rehab on your knee like every day yeah we do stuff like it's actually way longer days than when you're playing like you're there all like it's a few hours a day here at the gym and then there's there's rehab and the medical staff here is like unbelievable like when i had surgery i stayed for a few days at the, at the hospital there it's like it's like a Ritz Carlton, like hotel, like hardwood floor. You have your own room. Like they bring in, they bring you a menu and steak. Like it's an unbelievable. Like I was like, I might stay a couple. What the nurses look like <laughs> scrubbing you 60 down. Plus, eh? Sixty plus, sixty plus, <laughs> <laughs> and no English either. So I had to get my uh, probably grade one level German out and try to uh, tell her what I wanted something to drink or wanted something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, to be a fly on the wall, eh? Isn't that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they were great. Like I, I, they, anytime you're having surgery and stuff, you're you don't know what to expect, especially in a different country and stuff. But it's like the I knew Germany was known for medical facilities and whatnot. It was like first class on mine. Didn't even experience before. Mm-hmm. Not not like Russia. I've only heard, and I I don't <laughs> think it's it's like Russia. I, yeah. the coaches are doctors. You didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Yeah, you don't know what That's you're getting so involved much. with. So so who took care of you while you're doing all this? Because you had your girlfriend stay with you last year, right? And yeah, uh, it was a, now she's just I coming was, back and going back was, and forth now, or what what's going on? It was a there? bit of a grind this year. Yeah. I, I uh I was on I had a little thing set up in my in my living room to make sure I got my plate from the kitchen to the uh couch without putting weight on my leg and non crutches, but just slide like anything you get kitchen. used to. It. Yeah, I, I was. I was sliding the table over and I was like <laughs> I was uh, the first week or so you get adjusted, but after that, I was like, well, I'm, I'm pretty used to this now. Like it was, it was good. And then um, I had like a dry, a guy pick me up and drop me off every day, even though I just live 
you know, five minute walk from the rink, but I, oh, I was no weight bearing for six weeks. So I didn't want to mess anything up or be stupid by trying to, trying to wobble over there, but I'm, I'm happy with how it's feeling. I don't feel any pain and uh, just getting everything, I guess, uh, back to the strength it was. Cause you, you sent us that one picture with the, uh, your leg in that bag thing. Like what, what, what was that thing for? Like, how did that work? Oh, that's just uh like compression pants. That's just like to, um, almost like I know what it does, but I don't know what it does. Like just contracts the leg. Like it, it, it puts a lot of, pre- it's kind of like a massaging pants kind of thing. Oh, okay. It just gets just for you. A few guys use it without surgery too, just to get blood flow in the legs and like recover for after games and stuff. Um, and that just kind of to, to keep, uh, like, cause I had to do like blood thinner shots every morning and stuff, just cause you're not losing your leg. They don't want to get a blood clot or anything. Mm. So just kind of keep, keep moving. Uh, that so way almost, you almost it. you makes your muscles like work without you. working. Yeah. Them? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Nice man. Yeah. That'd be crazy though, to be just laid up for that long. I That would drive me nuts. That's that's yeah. That's what it was. Like it wasn't even the pain. Like once the surgery was done, you're, you know, you're getting better without even feeling anything. It just like, sitting around and you weren't going out much because it was such a hassle to go places. So you're being lazy. And once you're home from the rink, you're there for three hours. It feels like 10 because of showering and everything there. But, um, but it, like I said, it could have been a lot worse and, and you get used to it. And it was, it was, it was after a couple of weeks, I was kind of adapted well. And you realize some people that are in wheelchairs and stuff for the rest of their life, like crazy that, you know, six weeks isn't that big of a time in the grand scheme of things. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I need one for my full body. Like when I go on those three day hangovers and <laughs> never leave my bed, it'd be nice just to climb into one and it just like works out fish. for you. Like, I didn't even, I didn't even know you got hungover. Usually when you don't, you only get hungover when you stop drinking. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, how many... right, right back into them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how uh, many guys over there are from here? Like, are you guys allowed to? Yeah, have it's crazy. Out? Like, this is things I would have never known in my life. So, um, I always knew, uh, like, at some point in my life or my career, I guess, I wanted to play in Germany. I heard so many great things from guys that have played in the NHL, AHL. Like, if you go to Europe, that's where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And um, I knew I heard stories about Sweden too, but I still, uh, it was in COVID year, so I, I said I would try it. I knew what I was getting involved in. Um, it's not for everybody. It's just a different mentality, a different league, different different um system wise just a different game in sweden germany is much more north american style um i like to compare it like kind of like an american league on bigger ice Mm -hmm. and with the import rule um there's there's only a couple imports on each team in sweden but here there's nine nine can dress you have 11 import um contracts a year and but there's a a twist since so my dad's actually born in germany so Right now, they're in the process of getting like my German passport, so I won't be an import once I get that. Nice. So that's that's, a, awesome. it, it, that's what I mean. And then some guys that play have played here. There's a guy on my team. He's played here 12 years, and after year seven, you can apply for a German passport um, just by naturalization by being here. But it's very hard to like you got to take no German, take tests and all that stuff. For me, I don't need to do anything. I just my dad did a lot of paperwork and found old documents and whatnot of, of his parents and his, his grandparents and stuff. So um, it was, it, in the, I don't have it yet, but my process is much easier. And the, but the trick is that when you apply for naturalization, you have to give up um, your own Canadian passport, which is that Ooh. turns off a lot of guys to do because to apply to get it back or whatnot, it, you never really know if you're, what could happen, right? Like if you get in trouble somehow and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that, you don't want to, uh, play around with, I guess, get, being a Canadian citizen, your Canadian passport. But, um, so we have, we have like five guys that are American Canadian, but Germans, if you know what I mean? Like it's, uh, so they've been there that long or just their grandparents have German ties oh, okay. or something yep. like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like it's, it was, it was crazy. Me, every team does it. Like there's, it's a German league with like, there's not very many Germans in a sense. Mm-hmm then you would think, you know what I mean? All the coaches are North American. I, I think maybe except for one, like it's a very, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's, it's good. Is, is there a lot of uh, coaches that have coached in the NHL there? Um, or I any- know there, ha- I, I know there have been, there's, it, it, it's weird. Like even in Switzerland and, and Germany and um, like, I think they, I don't think they have aspirations. Like I, 
I think they're like the setup here. It's uh, it's such a different mentality with the winning and, and I mean, obviously if they got offered an NHL coach job, they would take it. But um, I think it's more, mostly former players that, that played like in the NHL and then played over here and then coached over here. Um, I, I'm just, I can't think off the top of my head if there is anybody that's coached in the NHL. I know there has been in the past and, and vice versa, but mm. um, that's another thing with, with, co- with coaching over here. Like if you're coaching in the American league or you're coaching over here, the American league's changed it a little bit in the last few years of more development opposed to a winning first mentality. Mm-hmm. So here that you want a coach to win, right. It's tough to, to take losses when you're not playing the guys you want to play or, or instructed to play. So that's why I think a lot of coaches enjoy Europe because there's high pressure, high, winning the city cares the teams care it's it's, uh it's good high reward too right that's what i mean yeah like it's it's a good good competition like you're you're involved and it's an everyday thing yeah Mm -hmm. what are the fans like there (sighs) crazy animals i I don't know if you've seen any video yeah Yeah, i've seen amazing i'm just like damn like it's packed every night right every night sold every night cologne is uh the biggest rink in the league they're they're eighteen thousand. i think just under eighteen thousand. Like it's like the, and then there's a, a big soccer club in town too. Um, and they fill it up. I want to say they're probably 20,000. Like they just love the, the, it's not really much as much individualized as like, you know, my favorite player in Toronto Maple Leafs is this guy or this guy. It's more team. They just love this, the team. Like mm-hmm. they're so for the team. Um, yeah. It's, it's something I, I like, again, I didn't even know what it was like over here, but they're, they're chanting the whole game. It's like, uh, Nothing like North American. Like it's it's I've never played in front of something like this in my life. Like like singing like they do in soccer. Oh and, yeah. Singing oh, really? banners and they're do you they're, ever hear that like while you play? Oh like, here, yeah. I've oh, been North you, American. Like, no. Zone it out like No, you can hear it here because you can't hear the coach talking to you on the bench. That's how yeah. loud it is. But I mean if like, you're like if you're on like on the ice, like games going on and everything and you're on the ice, do you still hear them or are you kind of in a zone here where you, you do. can block them out? Yeah. You do That's hear, crazy, yeah. Like, like home ice advantage in this league is crazy because it's <laughs> it's nuts with the fans. But like we, they're so passionate. Where we uh, we played a team, um, Bremerhaven the other day. They're they're up north, northern Germany, and they had fans here. It, it's a it's a ten hour drive. That's like crazy. Wow. The fans are are passionate. Just I give dedicated. them so much credit. Yeah, and they wow. just love the team. Like they're uh, they're everybody is. Well, I wouldn't say everybody because there's kids. Eighty-five percent of the fans are loaded. Like the beers are are a beer is so cheap. You're going for dinner here. A beer is three bucks and Coke is four. Like that's how oh, it is here. Wow. It's like they'd rather have you drink uh, a beer than 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 have exactly, a Coke. exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, great. the fans fans are, are because awesome, it looks yeah. really beautiful. Like when, yeah. like when you're snapping some of the places, the restaurants, like even just the city, like the street, like it it, it just looks unbelievable. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like it's something that like I, um, you, I would have never even known existed, you know, is, is coming over here and playing. And that's why I like the city. Like it's a small city. Um, you know, being from Essex, you don't want to like, you like your comfort zone too. So it's, yeah. mm-hmm. I can walk from my apartment to downtown in five minutes and, um, it's good. Yeah. It's good. That's awesome. That's so not cool. so man. I, I always heard hockey over there. It was just like straight nuts. Well, even when you yeah, watch, I know, I didn't know what like to expect. Bangler cup. It's unreal. Yeah. Like they're singing, yeah. banging drums. They're just, it's a big place. It's a big probably bar, shaking, bar party. Man, like, right. Man, how do we watch games over here, though? Like, is there any way we can watch games? I think it's tough. I, uh, I signed my parents up to this, to like, they have a, a TV channel here, mm-hmm. but I needed to use my German card and my dad's email. Like, it was, it's so complicated, but like, it's, it's complicated. Yeah, I don't even party know. Party at mom and dad's for a game. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, uh, Lou, Lou and Joe had it. They they streamed a couple of games. There. There's a few streams online, but they're they're kind of choppy and stuff. Like the one that I I bought, it's like like I can't like again like the presentation. Everything is is very well done. Like I didn't even know anything about European hockey when I was playing North America. I was kind of shut down to the idea. I was like, when I'm done over here or whatever, I don't want to play. And then COVID hits and things change. Obviously teams can't afford guys and different things happen. It's like, I was like, Oh, I'll try it out, play half a year in COVID. Then my plan was to go back to North America. And then there was an opportunity in Germany. I knew Germany was a lot of fun. And and like I said, with the import rules, some guys can't get into Germany because it's, there's no spots and stuff. You lose spots. So once, once you're in, you, you mm-hmm. kind of want to keep things going if you can. 
Mm-hmm. So they're almost trying to get you to become German so that they can. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's beneficial more spots to the, team, yeah. on the teams. Yeah. Now, no, in your, in your uh, league, like, do they do it like soccer? Like, so if you finish like first, you move up like, uh, 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 what, 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 you have like tiers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we're, we're the top league here, so we can't move okay. up anywhere, but um, they, that's a good question. Cause last year was the first year they, in German hockey, they started relegation. So Probably the last actually, place it. team last year went down to the second league. And, um, and so there's, yeah. So, and then this year there's going to be potentially two teams, the bottom two teams will be relegated this year. So that's what I like too, because um, I mean, we're off to a slow start right now and, and the year gets so long if you stay down there. Right. But at this point, it's like the second half of the year, you could be fighting to stay in the league and then, Sweden does it. These leagues do it. And, and the, the financial benefit for these teams is like millions. If you're in the top league or if you're in the set, you lose so much money. So it's, it's very stressful. And that's why I think like with the coaches, they like, they like that pressure. Players want to play for that, right? You don't just want to play and have no, mm-hmm. no motivation or something. Every game you know, is you're important, not, right? That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like almost every, every game in your regular season would be a playoff game. So you're not getting, Bumped exactly down. or in the last exactly. two that uh you kind of get screwed on that deal that's that's awesome that that's really yeah. Cool. yeah yeah were you were you offered anything over here before you went overseas um yeah there was potential things but um more on the business side of things it's like like i say when you I, i've noticed in a lot like i i put over there for eight years now and then I noticed my first couple of years, it was about winning and then the American league the NHL teams cared if American league teams won. So they would, would uh, be able to, you know, we benefit financially if, if the teams want you to play and, and um, it's worth it to play. But then as you get a little bit older, uh, hockey's obviously gotten younger over there. So it's more about development where, okay, if you're a more capable player of playing in this position, you maybe play someone younger, just, just the, which the NHL teams are allowed to do, right. They own the American teams, but it's not as, I guess not, not, I wouldn't say beneficial, but it's not as, uh, I guess, fun once you get older to, to kind of um, just be a mentor, just be around for the sake of being around, right? You want to work towards something or you want to, mm-hmm. um, you know, try to keep, I guess, improving no matter what your age is or, or what you're, you're at. You want to feel like you're playing for something. So mm-hmm. that's why I, when guys jump over, they're like, I wish I came over years earlier. I was talking to a guy who um, he played in Arizona last year. He's on my team and he, he's like, I wish I came over five years ago. So it's like, once you get over here, it's, it's such a different mentality. And it's so, like I said, so intense and, and, and it, it really gives you a new like aspect, a new, new, new life in your career, kind of. A new push. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. That's great. Like you, you, yeah. now you have a whole new outlook on hockey again. Right. Like for sure. It's not that for you, sure. you went down now, now you, now you play for something every single game. Exactly. Yeah. That's so mm-hmm. cool. Now, yeah. when you when you first went overseas, you went to Sweden. There, you went over with Joey V, didn't you? Was it yeah. you and him, right? Yeah. Because now he's back here. I see, right? So that's why I was asking. Yeah. So he he was under contract with Detroit when he went over. I didn't have a contract with anyone when I went over, okay. and it was it was um, the American League was cutting their salaries by I want to say forty percent of what guys were. It was just a, a kind of a mess, and their guys were playing like some teams. We're in a division with three teams for 25 games. It was just a, a messy situation, you know what I mean, in in, in the American League. So, um, yeah, I decided to go over there. I was like, I'll play half a year in Sweden. I went over in January and got COVID and got – things were shut down, things were open. It was such a, a up-and-down kind of ride. And then um, I knew I didn't want to play in Sweden after that and then um, didn't really know what I wanted to do because I was kind of turned – not turned off, but I was – I never really thought about playing in Europe um you know you're far from home and there's different things that go into it but here it's uh mm-hmm. the imports help and the english helps here and it's, it's good you miss the meg guys yeah i get it there you go yeah, yeah. No, yeah you're taking peacock, care of the, the peacock you're, you're, you're taking peacock. care of them you're taking i heard you're taking uh, care of them. Oh, yeah. now uh <laughs> now covid hit you like hard the first time didn't it yeah i had it twice and both times i was uh you know what i thought these they va- said the vaccine was gonna work or whatever so i once i got covid and i got the vaccines i thought i was kind of invincible i was like i'm not getting it again if i do i won't even know i have it and then last year i got it again and i was probably six seven days like uh just knocked uh, knocked on the couch yeah it was, it was tough but 
brutal. Oh, and your yeah. girl was there, so you soaked that up a little bit. <laughs> so, but you know, you, you got to know how guys are, right? If, if women haven't figured out how big of pussies we are, you know, like, especially when it, it's like being taken care of by mom, right? So, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, no, guys, now, now guys look, she's gone and no COVID cold. no yeah. more, right? Eh? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, the first time you're right in, the first time it was, I was, I had to stay in a, a hotel room in Sweden, and it was like, you're in a one room, right? You're going crazy, kind of. You don't feel good, and then, um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, I don't know. You don't hear too much about it going on now. I know guys and people are still getting it. And so we had like we had a couple cases this year, but nobody's getting tested. They got tested just because they really didn't feel well, and and for different reasons they got tested. But they didn't test anybody else on the team, so maybe that's the best way. I, I don't really know what. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone knows what the best way. I to don't do think anybody's too is. fucking worried about it anymore. That's the problem. That's which, what I mean. What like, shot did you get, Matt? What shot did you get? Oh, the vaccine? Yeah. You mean? Um, like there was what? The AstraZeneca, yeah. the... Pfizer, I think. Is it? That's Pfizer. Pfizer. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pfizer, that was the Pfizer. better one. The AstraZeneca, mm-hmm. people were kind of getting sick from it and shit. Yeah, I never You, you know what I heard? I, some people didn't feel... Yeah, like I... Uh, people had some things happen to them that... that like with the shots, right? And, and people and doctors were saying that it was... I know this isn't a COVID podcast, but like... I, I don't know. Like, I guess people got yeah. sick from them and, yeah. and they obviously didn't work too strongly, but, or maybe they did and they don't get any more sick. I, I don't I know. I only had a sore arm. Down. That was it. I just had my yeah. arm sore. Yeah. I, I, I had it twice and, uh, like, I, it felt like a, a hard flu for like the first day, but yeah. I was exhausted, like, so tired. Like, I couldn't believe how tired I was. Yeah. Normal agree, than, yeah. more than normal. You know? like, <laughs> more than usual. Yeah. More than, more than being hungover for <laughs> yeah, days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, he only had 10 beers that they didn't feel like. <laughs> hey, you know what? I got it when I quit drinking whiskey. <laughs> there you go. That was it. It was the, a- Ast- 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 or the Pfizer and, and the whiskey. That's mm-hmm. why I didn't, yeah. didn't get it that bad. But so last year when I got it, there was like a bunch of guys on the team got it and they weren't sick. And I was, I didn't feel well at all. Like I was like body aching, you know, sweating the stuff you get. And I, te- I was testing negative like four times and Holy I was like, shit. okay, like I'm fine, which is good. Like I'll be okay in a couple of days. And then I test positive, but I, like, it's so weird, right? Like, I mean, yeah. it's the same story for the last three years. People testing negative, no sip, vice versa, right? And it's Yeah, they're false negatives or whatever, right? That's what I mean. You don't really a Three you don't really or know. four in a row, that's kind of crazy. Like, especially if you're yeah. feeling as shitty as you Exactly. Feel. Like, I, I felt the worst out of everybody, and I was negative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's wild. But, uh, yeah, I think I think uh, it was unfortunate <laughs> that a couple of years there, a lot of people and stuff. But I, I hope it's something that doesn't come back, obviously. Oh, no shit. Hey, do you yeah. guys do the uh the old, yeah. <laughs> Hey, do you guys do the old freaking like uh rookie like things there, rookie uh parties there? Do you guys do all that shit over there like yeah. they do over here? Or? It's no, they don't because I ident- like it's hard to identify. We have a couple young guys on the team, yeah. but when you come over here, you mostly have played like say NHL HL, so you're not really a rookie per se mm. or you're not going to let someone tell you you're a rookie, yeah. you know? So it's, um, there's a couple young guys that help out with stuff, but we don't have uh rookie dinner or anything like that. Like I've had a bunch of those obviously, but I, over here, it's not the same in a sense, just, oh, just no that fun. way. As a team, do you guys yeah. go, go out a lot together and like hang out? And- um, it's like anything, like a lot of like, there's, there's eight guys this year having kids and well, they're not having them, but they're having they already have kids too. So like it's like second and third kids. So like there's a lot of kids, a lot of families, but uh, like last night I was out for dinner with a few guys and, and we had a, went out after for a couple of drinks and stuff. Like it's, um, it's just like anywhere else. Like they have family stuff to do too. So mm-hmm. guys that go, go out and, and guys that are, are here alone and stuff go out and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, people are just busy too with everyday stuff and, and families visiting and whatnot. So. Are you guys like recognized a lot when you're out in public? Um, Good more, yeah, more, <laughs> a little more, a little more as you're around. Like there's some guys that have played here six, seven years. Oh, okay. um, a little more. Yeah, I, I guess so. Like sometimes people don't like if they ask you, like they're like, "You speak English? Why are you here? What are you doing here?" I'm like, "I live here." They're like, "What do you do?" I said, "Like play hockey here," and they don't believe you. 
Mm-hmm. Like they don't believe that you play for the Panthers. You know, that's how they, their right. mentality is. Like they're so amazed. That well, they think you're like, a model. Like with that. <laughs> like, look at you, bro. So that, that, but that's another thing too. It's like, you can go outside the rink and they know you're a player, but it's not like North America. Like they don't, I don't know if they just have strict, they follow the rules. Like they don't bug people. Not that I ever considered it bug. Like, I don't know. I, I don't care if someone wants to talk to me or not. Like I, I have all the time in the world for the fans. Like they, you know, hard it wasn't COVID without the fans. You want the fans in the game. They're part oh, of the yeah. game. And they they help so much. Like, I, I I could never see someone. I could never say no to someone to an autograph. To, you know, people that people do that. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it just just a different mentality. But it, it's it's awesome. Yeah, like they're fans, but they're not. Uh, they don't bombard you with anything or, or bother you, and they're respectful. It's good. Beauty. That's sick. Yeah. It's like, you know, like they were talking about like Johnny Gaudreau. Johnny Gaudreau, they say in Calgary, he's recognized everywhere. And he's like, yeah. And like guys, guys that hang out with him, they're just like, fuck, it's got to be so hard. Like you can't even, hey, can I get a picture with you? You know, and you're eating or whatever. And yeah, like, yeah. Sure, you know, you take the picture. But he's like, if he goes to New York, nobody even knows who the fuck he is. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because New York's yeah. just so massive, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, and that's the same thing here. Like the, the German mentality is very like, they won't jaywalk like they won't cross the road if, if it says not to walk like there's they won't go to your if you're eating dinner and they recognize you or a kid wants they will never come bother you when you're eating dinner it's just like they're very follow the rules everything by the book That's which sometimes nice yeah sometimes it's, it's annoying sometimes it's not you know yeah. <laughs> it's like just yeah. go just walk there's no cars like just walk i don't want to wait here <laughs> yeah i get it all the time doing the podcast now <laughs> costco i heard the costco, store, yeah, costco store. Spot. yeah bar <laughs> barza so every night every night you're at yeah every night, every night. <laughs> <laughs> he's like I love it. I'm, I'm like Norm, Norm, right? Norm. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so you're you're obviously there. When is the season over there? Our last regular season. Yeah, that's the one thing with Germany is, is camp starts. We started August first, okay. and then um, our last regular season game this year is March fifth. Okay. Wow, so, that's kind of okay. So, so what what uh what brought you to Ger- Germany? Matt, like, like, so you didn't want to play in Sweden anymore. Like, like what, what made your mind up to go play in Germany? That was probably the only league I was interested in, in okay. Europe. Like whether it was, it was American league or NHL type of thing or Germany. Like those are the only two options I, I thought of um, just because of being in Sweden. I knew that wasn't for me. And I, Switzerland's got three or four imports and um, what, like some guys have played there 15 years have great players that I never even heard of great players, whatever they go there or to college and they, once you're in there, you're in there. So it's, it's kind of a little bit difficult to get jobs there too. Um, Russia wasn't, uh, I've thought about it and, um, and you him and Han, you're, you're laying in bed. You're like, like, could I do it? Could I not do it? I don't know. Guys do it. Guys don't do it. I, I know guys that are there this year and I know guys that have left my one buddy just left after two games. So like, I, I don't know. I've never played there. I can't tell you stories about it. What I hear good and bad. So mm-hmm. you just hear um, mad stories from over there, but that's there's what also I mean, like, it all depends on who you are and, and, and what your role <laughs> is on that team. Right. Because like, there's some guys like, like a lot of these tough guys are treated like gods over there. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like you don't, I, I play with a guy in junior and he's in there this year. He was, I, I was, not that I was going to go, I had potential to go over to that team. And I was like, we we're talking back and forth. And he's like, just come, just come. And I, I thought about it, but I just don't think, especially with stuff going on in the world, I don't even know what's going on over there, but like, yeah, you just don't know what it is, right? You don't know what you're getting involved with. I think to me, that kind of, that kind of is a little unsettling. And um, with Germany, you know what it, you're getting involved with, you know what it is. Um, and I knew, knew the, honestly, the biggest thing is, is the, the import rule. It's like, it's like a, north american team in germany you know almost like a north american league in germany right so that that was that was a big factor of of coming over and and everyone um andy delmore uh, i talked to him quite a bit about he played over here he's the assistant coach of the spitz I'm not sure if you guys had him on or not i know you had a few of them no nope. it's many of those guys on yeah. before but um yeah like and he's like gold. Oh, like he's like it's gonna be the best time of your life and then it is the league's great yeah it's good like everything's everything's good no complaints mm-hmm. I love hearing guys say shit about like 
Russia or like Russia stories and stuff. I love hearing the Russian hockey stories. I know, I know. I love hearing them, but I don't want them to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But I heard guys that go over there, they play over. I see some guys play over there for 10 years, and I'm like, well, it can't be that bad then. You know, I don't know. Like, it's, it's weird. It's a weird, weird league that you can't, it is. I can't really ever get a straight answer from guys either about no, money wise. The stories and, are and stuff. at such different spectrums, right? So I know, ones I know. are up here and they're like, Oh, you gotta go. And then once you're down here, it's like save your life. Do not yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So that that's gotta yeah. that's gotta be a really tough decision because maybe maybe the money's say twice as much as you're making in, in Germany, but but do you wanna put up with the hassle? And and that's the thing. I think guys are going like like guys are going there for the money, obviously. That's the only reason. Mm. But um like if you don't end up getting what they what you kind of think you're gonna get, then it defeats the whole purpose of going. And then right. you're like, well, I just spent Four months in russia and i haven't seen a paycheck or something here yeah. where or, or like they're said, saying they, that we're not paying you till you win right that's another thing it's like yeah. it's like uh they don't have relegation stuff there so by by december and january they're done in february if a team's not going to make the playoffs they'll look to cut salary like they'll just be like you know you're we're fine. getting rid of this guy yeah. yeah yeah which which is okay if you're if you're promised what you're making you're still going to make a good chunk of change but yep. at the end of the day you don't you don't want to be out of the game too long and stuff it just uh people told me it was it's a wild wild west over there you don't know you wouldn't be out that long man they got russian gas over there you wouldn't be out that long you'd yeah. be fucking healed you up even on know you hurt your knee. yeah you wouldn't even I know i've never had surgery because they would say nothing's wrong and you'd be in <laughs> rehab yeah because the coach yeah. would be like no no look you're okay yeah, yeah. there you go get yeah. back out there hilarious yeah, yeah it's it's I, yeah i don't know it's like anything you don't really know until you do it yourself i guess right people can tell you what they the good and bad, right? Mm-hmm. The agents are telling you the good because they want their five percent of what you're gonna make, and um, and that's another, that's also another thing with Germany, like apartment, car, agent fee, all that. I don't I don't pay nothing. Like they they take care of everything here. Just well, pay for fantastic. Yeah, it's. Uh, I see why like you want to be a German resident now. That's what I mean. Everything's taken care of. Just like pamper. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, seriously. That's awesome. it's, it's it's yeah that that's a benefit too so you factor that into your salary right like if you're in the american league and you're getting and over here it's tax-free there you're getting cut in half taxes apartment all that stuff so it's all comparable in a sense of, of what guys make and um obviously russia is a lot more what they tell you yeah. but um yeah, that's, well, you got the Russian that's mob like, paying for you, right? So yeah, there's a suitcase yeah, until they don't want to pay. Until they don't want to yeah. pay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see the red dot on your shoulder. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gone. yeah. Don't okay. Because don't I was pay. just listening to a, a Chicklets episode, and one of the guys, I don't know if it was Teddy Purcell or or somebody like that, but he was like, "Yep, yeah, I was there for a month." He's like. I jumped in the cab and went right to the airport. He goes, "Keep my shit. I don't care. Yeah, I leave it." And you know like, what? So I heard a story. I, I from a I it was this guy's uh very reliable source. I played with this guy for three years. And it was it was his brother that was over in Russia playing. And uh he had a clause in his contract that if he got in trouble by the police, they did they didn't have to they could cut him. So one night, like two in the morning, like people are pounding on his door. He looks at the people and there's like rushing police out there with guns. So they were coming to say he was in trouble. That was his out of getting out of the contract. Oh no shit. And I was like, I was like, that's a story that you, you don't know. Right. Like you don't like you don't right. and you it, really gotta get your like, agent to read yeah. that contract. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's I mean, nuts. Yeah. <laughs> like just to get out of it so you don't have and we can cut you. Yeah. Out. Just say yeah. that oh. hey, we don't want you anymore. You don't have to send the cops. Well, then he woke up in the morning, he left. He's like, I'm I don't care. I don't even want the money. I don't care. I'm leaving. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking they're massive. scared of they did their job, yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you like plan on staying over there the rest of your like playing days are you gonna try to end up back over here like what's no i'll uh i mean i'm just i signed a one-year deal this year i don't um not not that i don't want to play i just want to go year to year and kind of see once you get the passport it'll be more clear um clarification on kind of uh what what more beneficial for me to play over here probably oh yeah uh, so um but yeah what if i I I could get you a trial with the lease (laughs) <laughs> well i'm done here in march so they're usually done at the end of march right so it's really it's <laughs> <pretty similar. laughs> so you guys would be good at the same time yeah good. I, you know i think there's just so much with with there's so much emotional on the mental side of, of um nhl ahl 
mm-hmm. you know, there's a grind that part of it too, away from the rink, right? Like where, um, you know, you're moving all the time. There's just so much more things that go involved with playing in North America that you don't have to worry about here. You're not going to get traded here because uh, the players got to agree to the trade. Like just things oh, where you really? are things. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's wild. That's beneficial here. And um, so you almost not, have not, a no trade clause then, right? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And, you're in full control. I, I wouldn't say it's less stress here. Um, I, I do think that, but that's maybe not the right word. Just less, less BS, I guess, over here mm-hmm. opposed to over there. Well, you know what you get. Yeah, that's what I mean. And that's why guys come over. They're like so sick of of not knowing, you know, guys from all aspects of different levels, whether you're you're battling to get in the NHL or battling to stay in the AHL. And they come over here, they're like, I wish I came over earlier because you're you get told so much shit in North America, Mm -hmm. which is like any job, right? There's always stuff going on. Mm -hmm. It's like anything. But you come over here and it's just just uh you know where you're stand and then it's it's good. Like it's, well, there's so many rules. Like I was listening to uh, Mike Motto on one of his one of his episodes. Uh, I think it was the Rink Shrinks, and he was talking about you know him and him and um, Kane were counting down the days of him staying up with the big club so that he didn't get sent down back to the AHL. He's like, then we're t- looking at hours. Now we're down to the minutes. Yeah. Like, How stressful is that? That you're, you're thinking about every single day that you're up there. Okay. I got, I got three more days in 26 and uh, 22 hours, you know, like I got, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and then, and they're looking at each other and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm going to do it. Hey Mots, can you come in the office? And he's exactly. like, and, yeah, and we're yeah. down to 17 minutes left for me to, but you know what I mean? With them rules, like, no, yeah. then he goes back to the AHL and it's like, just. Like and I then said. there's so much stuff too that doesn't meet the, like the public eye where, so like, I guess I get, so every, there's, there's an NHL pension you get, right? Whether you're playing a game or not, if you're on the NHL roster, it counts towards pension. So when you turn 60 or 65, you get a good chunk of change per year for, depending on pro rate, how many games you've been up. And, um, there's just different things where like when, when you're getting called up, they, they, they won't call you up until like five o'clock. I was talking to a guy last night. He was in the East coast league and he was going to go get called to the American league. So they won't call him up before five o'clock at night because it counts for a day of pay. If you call him up four or five. So he, the next morning he had to fly like across the country, play that night. And they sent him back down that day just to save on money. And, and another thing too, with the American league is like, there's a veteran rule where once you play um, over 320 games, between the NHL and AHL, you're a vet, and only five vets can play in a game in an American League game at a time. So it really once, I mean, it's 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 a stupid rule, but then it goes yeah. again to the development part of it, where like, oh. you know, what job that kind of, uh, I guess, punishes you for having um, more experience, right? Like, so like the, the more games you play, you play in the NHL. You, like, if I would have went to college and came out at 23, 24, I wouldn't be a vet until I'm 28, 29. Here, I play pro at 20 years old you're yeah. about at, at 24 25 you know like there's but it is what it is i'm not complaining about it just just part of the business that doesn't really um well that's crazy i never do that yeah there's just so much things that and that's why you know here there, there's nothing to worry about you know you're just playing yeah, it's, it's it's a pro <laughs> league and they they want to win they don't care whatever happens mm-hmm. hey what are those bottles behind you is that wine yeah I made I, when I was injured. I made this this thing into like a little uh, a little bar and stuff. Oh, sweet! Yeah, I, it was all empty all year. I had I had wine and and uh, it's for when you come. Is it, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, no. It's, it, <laughs> the bush lights it's, in the it's hard to it's hard to put a bottle up there when you're finishing them all, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I only have three three drinks back with three bottles. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You man. notice the wall kept going, right? You stopped yeah. the camera like right here. <laughs> yeah. There's a door down there too. Open. <laughs> Wow, Are you a, a wine connoisseur? Did did uh, did hockey no. uh, turn you on to that? No, I. Uh, it's funny because so I was. I know you guys had Gomez on a couple of times, and he he was like, uh, he orders the big bottles of wine at dinner. Like he's he doesn't look at the price; he looks at the bottle. like the high and, end. Yeah. Okay. And for me, like obviously, we're in different ends of this yellow spectrum. tail. Like I, I'm I'm reasonable where. You know, if it's a headache in a bottle and it's six bucks, I probably won't get it because it's probably too cheap to be good. But <laughs> if it's reasonable at, at a place, like I'll be reasonable. You know, I'm I'm kind of common sense. I'm not stupid, but I can't tell a difference from wine to wine. I just know what I like, and and uh, when you feel good, you feel good. So Are you a red or a white? <laughs> I like red. 
I like red, but I'll drink white too. You got white? Yeah, you, 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 drink, you drink the bag, bro. You drink the bag. Yeah. Out of the bag. Box I, of wine. Bro, I, I, Box uh, of wine. Yeah. I, you know what? That's why I can tell I feel older is because I like like Manhattans and old fashions now too, which before when I, like, um, five Collins. years ago, if I would have smelt it, I would have been like, that's disgusting. Yeah. And, and, and now that's, uh, I'm getting older. Yeah, I'll be 30 this year. Yeah, oh, now he's drinking go. scotch Look on the rocks, out. smoking yeah. stogies, <laughs> fucking golfing, swearing every time he swings a club. Do you do you yeah. smoke the stogies? No, I, I had uh, I, my brother lives in New York, and I went to a cigar bar with him a couple times, and that was a lot of fun. But again, like I I don't know the difference. I don't know what a great cigar is, right? Like yeah. the guy was uh, he brought us in there. It was a big room and showed us around, and he was telling us everything about cigars and like we're gonna save the time we're we'll get to that tell me a couple that taste good or whatever and it was it was an awesome time barry said uh meg barry he said that the longer the only barry i know (laughs) yeah the longer the ash stays on the cigar the better the cigar is yeah i I didn't know whether that's true i don't know my cigars are a lot different from the ones that you those aren't cigars those are blunts (laughs) yeah those are blunts yeah Yeah. open your eyes right now nope can't do it (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you got to play. Wait, is that, Sponsored is that by your Tony's joint. I was just going to say, is Tony <laughs> are you? Is that are you? Are you, <laughs> are you Tony? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, who, who is calling you too big Tony? Is that, is that Darren McCarty? McCarty. Yeah, McCarty, yeah. McCarty. So, yeah, he doesn't know. He's got a shirt going his way that he doesn't know is going to be happening <laughs> probably pretty soon. So I used to see him all the time because he, he would come down to Grand Rapids a bunch when I was there and, uh, in Detroit, too. When I was there, he was mm-hmm. he was always around. He's... Um, good friends with the trainer there so it was, he's a character oh yeah so oh yeah that was what i wanted to tell you uh kyle blow said to say hi he said yeah he was uh, well, I, I saw he you he got traded right you t- yeah I, well you guys yeah. said on here i didn't see it but yeah i i escaped with him a couple times when i was getting ready to come over to germany last summer yep yeah. yeah he said you were awesome to hang out with great guy like he's but like, like holy fuck that guy can shoot <laughs> and, but, he but can he, shoot too he's got a good shot too though like yeah guy. he does yeah he does yeah. but uh he was saying, like, I, I talked to him after he got traded, and I'm like, bro, I'm sorry, you know, like that that really sucks because he was really worried about getting traded, you know, when they mm-hmm. when they brought up another junior B guy, and he was right. he knew it was coming, and you know, Shirky and Halsey and all the all the guys around him were just like, relax, you know, like nothing's gonna. And sure enough, it, it they end up pulling the trigger on it, but he got traded to Bell River, which is a pretty good wagon. Yeah, you know? could have been worse. So up, after so. I talked to him, he was like, no, no, I'm happy. He goes, I got Coach Q now, and he is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, good for him. No, but he's Plus, lighting I, it up there too. Yeah, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because well, I guess Bell River and Essex, like those are the two. Yeah powerhouses every yeah. year right I, I yeah. don't i don't follow the standings too much i was talking to jamie the other day actually and he said they're uh, seven and one right now Generally. unless they played re- again yeah mm-hmm. so he uh yeah that, that was good but that new guy he got on there he's he knows what he's talking about with oh my god yeah, he, like, he was, you know how much he bails us out <laughs> yeah, I was, I, rob and well, i are more like off I'll the glass rob. and out type deal where yeah. he's more like carried in and let's snap it around a little Toe bit dragon like, fucking people yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, awesome. sometimes yeah, I'll text Rob it. when he said when Rob makes a mistake, I say, "No, this is what like Jordan or I get, I get all the I get all the corrections yeah. on the Snapchat." <laughs> but no, that guy's like he's uh, it's tough. To, the junior hockey is a lot of teams in our area. He he knows mm-hmm. all what's going on he's with all. He, well, like, when we yeah, were talking about the the kid from Wheatley, and he goes, "Oh yeah, well no, he's an AP that plays for the Sharks." And oh, I'm like, dude, "Yeah, why? yeah." How do you yeah. know this? Yeah. You know, he's like dialed in, man. Well, yeah. he don't he don't drink either. No, and he don't <laughs> smoke weed either. So, well, there you go. Now he's he's the yin to our yang. Yeah, you see yeah. how it's all balanced out now. One of the one of the first. And that's why it's working. One of the first things he fucking said to us too. He's like, I don't drink or smoke or anything. So if we're ever out somewhere, I'll like I'll just drive. Yeah, he's like, like my Uber right. now. <laughs> like, or maybe okay. he said that you didn't know if that was a prerequisite to be on the pod. He's like, hey, I don't drink or smoke. <laughs> Do you drink? Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and you just went to the front of the list, kid. Yeah, there will be it. drinking and drug tests in, 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 <laughs> in your uh, yeah future. So, uh, oh, so you were speaking about your brother, like, so you, when you were playing with the Rangers, you you had a, a brother's trip. Is that is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what? what can, can you fill us in on that? Yeah, that was awesome. Actually, that was uh, that was really cool. Something you know, he'll remember. I'll remember forever. It's um, it was over New Year's. We played in um, Arizona on uh, 
the first game of the trip. So the brothers, they came in the night before uh, we played at home against Minnesota. And then we had a day off and we flew there. We had practice. They bring all the brothers and stuff to the, to the, uh, when I was with New York, we actually, they have a practice facility about 45 minutes outside the city. So they brought everyone there, watch practice, have breakfast, have lunch. And then we go to um, the airport and um, flew to Arizona. So like the brothers come on the plane with you and he sat like right beside me and stuff. And um, so that was awesome. And then we got to Arizona and they, like New York is like unrealistic how amazing this organization is, right? Like the, all the organizations are like this, but they had everything planned for the brothers, like from, you know, free time to this, bring them to this, this place, all this stuff, right? Like, and um, that group of guys I was with on New York, it's like such great guys, superstars that you wouldn't even know were superstars. And um, so they, they took care of the brothers, the siblings. Um, sorry, it wasn't a brother trip. It was a sibling trip. Some guys oh, brought siblings. their sister okay. and stuff. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that was awesome. And then we flew from it, played in Arizona and then we flew to um, Colorado, played in Colorado. Um, and that was New Year's Eve and then New Year's Eve after the game in Colorado, we had a big thing set up at a bar with all the siblings and the staff and, and stuff. And, um, and then we flew back to New York the next day, um, which would have been obviously New Year's day. And, and yeah, it was like three, three days, three, four days and everything's taken care of. Everything's That's set up awesome. for you. They don't have to do anything. They, they bring the brothers on the bench. I think it was a good picture of my brother on the bench in uh, in warmups, um, in, in Colorado, like they brought all the brothers out and, and I think he actually got an interview too from, from the MSG TV or whatever. So oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was good. Yeah. I, I got a good picture of him and I after morning skate in, uh, in Colorado. So that, that was cool because he's been in Montreal and different school and stuff. So I don't really, I haven't seen him that much. I'm in Germany now, obviously, but I don't really see him that much. So to be able to end up in New York and have a sipping trip and stuff was, was really something you'll remember forever. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Should bring him at Meg meeting. I heard yeah. he's too, I heard he's too smart to go to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been home much. He hasn't been home much, especially with the uh, – so he works in New York, and he had the, the visa he has on and stuff, and the border was closed forever. So he hasn't been home for, for a while, but I went and visited him. I go visit him in the summers and stuff in New York and, and whatnot. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Those Meg guys, it, they're characters. You got to <laughs> you gotta be careful who you bring in there because they the your guests won't be walking out. That's no. Sure. <laughs> By the time no, Joe gets a hold of you. They're like, ruined. I, I was I was times. I was a straight A student before I got to yeah. that night yeah. meeting. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it just, a, so. right down the hill. I I don't know how like if I want to go over to Joe's and I have two hours, I can't go. You need six hours because yeah. I tell him I'm leaving and he opens the beer and puts I was like, Joe, I gotta go. Oh, one more. One what more. Do you hate me? The what case do you is hate gone. Me? The case is gone. He's saying one more. I was like, one more for the more day. <laughs> hey, hey, stay for one more. Sawyer, run out to the pool yeah. house and grab us a couple of beers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, go get him. Well, he, he must have a case of Gatorade there now, no? <laughs> no, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Why? What? I paid him. I paid him. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just heard it. I saw it. Oh yeah. That, uh, he Rob's like they're all chirping me in the chat. Rob, oh, they're, they're Lou, always, and, Lou and Joel. They're Lou and Joel have been doing Rob's grocery shopping for him. I guess. Well, are you going to Costco? Hey, grab me a case of Gatorade. <laughs> Rob needs that. That's recovery. Yeah, but they, he, yeah. So <laughs> he's you know all how you, you transfer somebody, and then you got to put in the stupid password, and, and then the, the answer to the password. Unless they set up an auto deposit, and that's what I said. I said, "You fuck, just set up an auto deposit, and it goes right in." And he's like, "Yeah, but uh, I don't know how to do that." I, I, hey, Jordan, why don't you set up it for? Yeah, I'll set it up for him. <laughs> and then, and Rob told him the password was Gatorade. Yeah, said, it was you better Gatorade. make sure you make sure you tell them how you spell Gatorade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, listen, I've Gatorade. seen Rob spell. I've seen Rob, and I'm sure you have too, Pump. Sometimes it's not the best. Sometimes hey, I'm like, what did you eight, say? Not, not after eight o'clock at night. Well, I, I don't have my glasses on, and I just hope I'm hitting the right letters. No, I'm just kidding. It, it is funny. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's all it's autocorrect done wrong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so, Pops, we did when we had you on last time, we didn't get to talk much about uh, uh, the Rangers when you played for the Rangers. How did how did that all go down? Yeah, I was with, um, well, I was with Ottawa for four years. And then um, the first year out of your entry level contract, you're eligible for waivers. So I made the team, and I, I want to say I was up for probably a month and a half. It was actually, it was in November. So just over a month. And then um, 
I wasn't playing too much. And obviously at that age, any age, you got to play. So I was going to get sent down and I um, um, have to clear waivers. So I got put on waivers and New York picked me up. And that's, um, I was obviously very fortunate for that. You, you get to stay in the NHL, you get to go to New York City and, and play in, you know, the, the world's most famous arena they call it and all that yeah. stuff so that was uh yeah that was awesome that was uh that was a lot of fun that year and um we had a really good team made the playoffs um but yeah so um got picked up by them and then like I said it was kind of a day-by-day thing at the start and then started doing um not too bad and then and they told me I was going to stay for the year and um and then that was a good conversation to have and and it was a great group of guys and and um and yeah it was a lot of fun Mm-hmm. Did did anybody uh, like take you under their wing and and like kind of show you New York? Like uh, you had Rick Nash there, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Super yeah. Mello. I mean, so yeah, like those guys are awesome guys. Like Ryan McDonough and all those guys. Um, like it's just the type of guys. Like like these Hall of Fame. Like Lundquist is there, and he's like, okay, you guys. Like there's a couple of us that are younger and and no families and stuff, and he had us over for like Super Bowl party. Not Super Bowl party. Watch Super Bowl have a party, and it's like you're going up in this place that you shouldn't even be in. And it's like, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, and you were wishing you know, Sawyer was there. You're like, fuck. And you're, yeah, I yeah. know, but, uh, but I just, he doesn't know what a bush you. light is. I don't think. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but I imagine you like sitting there, right? Like small, like from a small town, everything. And you're like, I'm sitting here at Hendrick Lundquist's house, like growing up yeah. watching him play. And, but then it goes to a test. Like I play on different teams and I play with great players who weren't great people, but like these players, you wouldn't even know where they were at in their careers because how they treated everyone. Right. And that, that was a huge eye opener when I went to New York. It was like, it was awesome. Right. And, I, I, think and I think it rubbed think- off on you, bro, because like, I think you're a great person because like I, I've been, I've sat in rooms with you and we've had beers and people walk in there that maybe don't even know you and they don't even know that you're an NHL player, you know, like, or played in the NHL at that time. And I thought you're just a regular guy and that's that's the way everybody should be. You're not like like at the end of the day, we're all still human, right? Well, that's what I mean. Like, there's like playing hockey. I yeah, shouldn't really change kind of how you're treated or whatnot, right? Like, you don't really deserve more or less because you play hockey. But mm. there's a lot of people who do more jobs that are way more important than playing hockey, you know. And um, but like you mentioned, Rick Nash. Like, we're I remember we played on American Thanksgiving in in Philly. It was an afternoon game, like one o'clock, and um, like he's like yeah he's like okay tonight like you guys are the young guys right they don't have families he's like i'm gonna have thanksgiving dinner like my wife's whatever so we land and we go right to his house for thanksgiving dinner like i've been there for one one even a week and it's like to have someone in your house you know let alone someone Mm -hmm. younger and and just kind of starting off and you know the first couple years of pro hockey where he's played x amount of years and games and it's it's uh he, he was the guy that was like He's, he's the nicest guy in the world and, and, and obviously an awesome player. And, and, um, but like I said, they were all like that. It was, it was awesome. It was Hall of Fame? Person. Yeah. I don't know. Player. Like I, I, I'm not good with what credentials guys have to get in. Right. Like if I, I, uh, even when I watch games, I think some players are good that, that are, are kind of under recognized and, and vice versa. Like there's guys that get points that I, I don't think that are, are, great players and, and stuff. So I'm not even sure. I know he's got over a thousand games. I know that, but I don't know what it takes, what the credentials are to get in the hall of fame now and, and how it works really. I don't yeah. so I'm well, not Alexander that. McGillney's so, not even in there. Right. Like I, I, I think his, McGillney his claim, should he's be the first. It's so what's his status with Russia? He was the, was he the first, first effect, first to defect to the NHL. Okay. Yeah. See, like I, I'm not that great with the history stuff, but I'm more, kind of keep up the day with it but that's that i would see as like paving the way to a big yes. part of the hockey all thing like, for, for all yeah, of them right yeah yeah, yeah. so i can like see that he yeah, didn't do sure. it who who would have been the first to do it right yeah but he still yeah. has like i want to say three cups but i'm sure you can correct me on that no i'm not I, i'm not good with that stuff i remember <laughs> he was he was what was he in a raid nine for the league for the nine <laughs> Then how do you uh, correct me on other stuff? Well, you we, Google well we know. Well, no, because I, the other day, you, the other day you mentioned a, a current GM who who was a GM. He's still a GM in the NHL right now, but you he was you said the wrong team. That's what I correct you on stuff like that. Oh, okay. I'm not good with like historic stuff. Right. Lou Lou would be good with that kind of stuff. I yes. I uh, and especially me being over here the last year, I'm I'm really out of touch with 
hockey stuff because of the time zones and stuff. I don't see anything, which is, is, I, I don't mind getting away from things a bit. It, it's nice. Yeah. He has sure. a long ass resume, but he's won one cup. One cup. Yeah. So Rob was only off by two. Right. <laughs> two, two but cups. If Tristan day, was I here. Suppose. He would have straightened that out before. Well, even, oh, he would have known. Yeah. He would have known. Sure. I would have go. I would have went to say three. It'd be like one. Be well, like, we know he didn't win that yeah. cup when he was with the Leafs, so I'm going to say he won it in New Jersey. Yeah. Good dig. Did it take you all day to think of that one? <laughs> fucking loser. Hey, why do the you flip your nowadays. shirt inside out now because you still haven't turned Oh, I got that one upside down right now. <laughs> fucking bomb. <laughs> um, I'm all tapped, Rob, so anything you want to ask, fire away, bro. Oh, yeah, Lou sent me a couple things. Oh, boy. Oh. This, this is the so segment of the show where question. it always gets yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> What's your you favorite color? It must be 16 years of older to listen to the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heads up. <laughs> no, so, and I did see his text about, yeah, ask him about the Quiznos. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you fucking guy. Oh, no, he, uh, yeah, he was talking about, um, what was it, uh, I'm laughing because I don't you, know. No, sorry, 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 sorry. When you had the, when you had the boys down to uh, what was it, Brigham? Oh, Binghamton, yeah, yeah, Binghamton. Binghamton. Sorry, yeah, yeah. When, when when the boys went down to watch you there, yeah, that was uh, well part. Like, <laughs> like I could tell you a hundred stories, but I can't tell you stories that I I, I need to still be able to go. Above. No, he you know, said just ask him about when the boys came to visit him in Binghamton. Yeah, no, that was awesome. That was uh, hey, they came, I mean, they laughed. It was all right. <laughs> these guys, yeah, these guys like. I give them so much credit. They obviously, you know, good friends of mine. And they, they, when I got called to the NHL, my first NHL game, they drove down the next day. Like that's not close from Essex to Ottawa. And then Binghamton's about eight or nine hours. And um, they drove down and, and uh, yeah, they, you know, it's funny because they came out of Grand Rapids a bunch too, but you can always tell when my friends are there because I, I know where the family sits and stuff. And I'm, I'm looking up and, and there's some of them are standing up straight, some are wobbling up or whatever, you know, because these are games at night, right? And, and, and they wake up and they're on vacation too. So they wake up, they have lunch and we'll all eat lunch with them. And, and I'm drinking water or, or a Coke and they are going to the Caesars. Oh, yeah, everything. <laughs> so, uh, but it's funny because not that I'm ever nervous, but I know there was wives and girlfriends and they're most times probably like it's a quiet crowd. But when these guys come, like the first night they come, everyone's probably like, okay, who are they with? Right. Yeah. But by the second night, like the wives and girlfriends are hammered with these guys, and I, <laughs> wow, and it's like a big party, right? And then they came to Grand Rapids two years in a row. The year, the second year, they're like, I remember you guys, flat. like, you know. Yeah. It, but but Binghamton, I remember we went to these bars, and it's like you get a big pitcher of beer, like it, it's got like a tap on it. It's like seven bucks, right? It's like the upstate New York, you know, it's so cheap for for beer in, in the states and stuff. And, and these these guys were hammering beer. I think actually, I'm. Yeah, I want to say uh, so. Jordan and and another Dane, you know Dane, they uh, they slept in their car downtown Bingham, and downtown Binghamton's not like overly safe. Like you're upstate New York, and it, you don't know, right? And uh, they they slept in their car, and they, there was an app on Voxer where the previous day they could tell where I was boxing from from my location, mm-hmm. and I live about ten minutes outside of downtown. And these guys in the morning knock on the door, and, and I'm like, "How did you guys find?" Like nine in the morning, they're frozen, right? Because they slept in a car. It was like December, or November. Their nose is red. They're like, whatever. And they came to where I was living. I was renting a house with a guy, and it was, uh, yeah, those guys. Those guys were they, were they I mean, there? They're to... both. They both have kids and married now, so I gotta be like, you know, they're yeah, they're yeah, 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 yeah. They weren't drinking too much, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so, it's so, like sometimes so like they, you, you hear you, these podcasts, guys are. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. So you hear these podcasts, guys are talking. Everyone wants stories, but nowadays it's like everyone's got their phones out everyone's just oh, looking yeah. to pick people apart whenever they can so you can't really say too much about yeah anytime right like um for what for what you did and in junior or, or not right not that anything was like ridiculously crazy or anything just right stuff that goes well on. it was like yeah. you said uh like in, in the last interview like you're like when i retire yeah. i'll come on and tell you some stories well i thought that you know, yeah, like, it was like, like coaches if, if, and players and yeah you can't sewer these guys because if, right, if you right. want another shot back in the nhl and you could get one like who who yeah. knows right but or even if I, you want to coach in the future yeah like it's 
Yeah. And then they they hear they hear our shitty little podcast yeah. here. And they're like, "Remember when Pumple Seward? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, 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 the we heard him talking about two dickweeds from fucking yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. this, you know, the stats are what they are. You you play with twenty five guys a year, thirty guys a year for ten years. There's guys you don't like. There's guys you like. There's guys in the game that people have a different image of from TV to what they actually are, mm-hmm. like good and bad, right? So you. But you can't just come on and start being like cutting up guys for that people love in, in the real world. You know, it's just how it is. Well, I'll tell that, you though, that's like, the content when guys. This shows uh, guys yeah, right? I know. Like, for you guys, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so like, yeah. hey, Pumple, we heard your fucking episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you though, if this show's rocking still when he's done, you got to come back on and just let it rip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I gotta bring someone. He's else not on gonna be coaching so can, too, right? Like, I don't care. Bring <laughs> bring someone else on. You guys can just bounce yeah. shit off each other. <laughs> yeah, you guys gotta get Lou back on. We well, yeah. Now, 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 now that he's uh, on the board too, right? That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's a beauty. Like I want to, I want to get his brother on there too, and then I want to get yeah, them both yeah. together and hear the stories that they got. Like, oh yeah, hey, I won't sit bad. between them. That's for sure. Too bad you weren't <laughs> home for that freaking like seventy threes like weekend there right that would have been good if you were home for that oh yeah that was a good i heard that was a good time and stuff stuff. yeah Yeah. food was with me like uh, joe joe uh garon did an amazing job that's good they that's awesome they did stuff like that yeah yeah for be able to do but it's a great great organization there was a lot of pricks out there that like oh my god i can't believe this guy made the top 50 oh yeah of course yeah that you get that with everything in life you're not yeah yeah, no one's happy no one's happy in life (laughs) yeah um but no 73 is a it's a great great organization the way they run things for for that standard it's so high it's, it's good yeah, it's, a, it's a like like you you talk to some of these kids on there and they're like you know like it it, it feels like we're playing junior a the way we're treated you for know sure. like and then they get everything everything is is you know and they and they play hard to be on that team yeah but, yeah you know like they also do a lot of work for the the community and all that stuff so like it's a it's a give and take you know so i agree yeah. i agree yeah and and they got the beer serving again yeah i saw that yeah yeah you're, I wonder you're welcome I, I really pulled help. for that one i really pushed for that one yeah, it's beer. good though it brings out it'll bring on more it's good it's yep. good for well yeah. even people that you know like oh hey yeah oh, well you can have a beer at the game mm-hmm. well fuck i'm not gonna go up to the woodcraft i'll, I'll go watch a little bit of hockey and you know exactly. have a beer there exactly so. And they're, and, they're, and they're averaging, didn't you say, Ant, they're averaging like uh, over 500 right now? So before they even started serving the beer, every game was pretty well over 500. Last That's year great. when they were in the playoffs, they were putting like 1,100 in the building, I think. Yeah, there was during, over 1,000 people. In the playoffs, like it was, it was like awesome. pretty packed during the playoffs. It was nice to see. Yeah, I really, really wanted to get home for a game. And then we had like a couple breaks in our season last year because of COVID where they would say, okay, one week off and whatnot. Um, but this year, um, they should still be playing by the time I get home. So that'll be, that'll be good. Mm-hmm. Cause I think, so they're, been, doing, I I think they're doing that like Memorial cup kind of thing again, uh, where in like, Essex? no, it's, I, I don't no. know what's if it's in Essex, uh, but they're doing it like one spot, four teams go to it and they're going to do it. That so way. is there a host or is it just four teams that win and they'll find a spot? I don't think there's a host. I think it's just, okay. you go play there and like, which is kind of stupid if you ask mm-hmm. me, like, yeah yeah I don't, especially because yeah. like okay so then the not, not everybody's gonna go there right but but i oh, kind of sure, like yeah. i like the playoffs right to the end yeah you know and you can win it on home ice you know, know. what, what better and, to and, lift that schmaltz cup on home ice and not in freaking tilbury just have all the series yeah. break yeah you'd have to win a lot of series though like you'd almost have to shorten everything up instead of going to seven game you'd have to do like a five game or well they shortened the season last year but this year is not going to be a shortened season no, it's going to be know. a regular regular season so no, but i mean when they it out? i mean when they go into the like playoffs for to go all the way to the end there to the the freaking cup but Instead of doing the four, you would have to win like series the whole time to get there. No, I get that. You, you know have to win I mean? two more series. But that yeah. being said, look at the revenue that you're going to bring into your arena. Oh, oh, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, I think it was a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money that? because they got a wagon right now. And, and, mm-hmm. and you know, like, they they lose out on what? So it would, it would be three series. You got four teams, right? So it would be three series that they, they would lose uh, revenue on, which is probably be, a lot yeah. of money when you're packing the arena with. Oh, for sure. 1,500 people for a playoff game? 
Mm-hmm. And then they're probably spending money to go stay wherever they're going. Right. And then and then the right? fans, now you got it. Now you got to take time off work. You got to go stay there for what, a week? Like yeah. I, would, I would think it's a week set up for take like too, a yeah. seven day thing. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that's it. weird. That's weird. Yeah. I don't like it. I, I, especially cause like I said, we got, we got such a wagon here. Like we could see the small cup being played right here in town. Yeah. So we'll get Lou on it. We'll get Lou. Yeah. On it. Yeah. We'll get, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. let's go Lou. Yeah, need you getting on the <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, um, so one more. I got one more. Yeah. So, so um, uh, my goal song is uh, a. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> See, I step, you step, if I can step ahead of it, I like it. <laughs> oh, you listened to the episode? <laughs> no, I had. I, you already asked me last time. So I, I know you were on the show. <laughs> okay, can you talk about uh, your when you played high school hockey? That was one another one. See, Lou never sewered you on sewered you on any of these. Just nothing to sewer me about. Right. Um, yeah. You know, he uh yeah, I played with Lou. It was awesome. Uh, but I played with Lou when I was younger too. Um we played Yeah, but uh, you were like you were weren't you like uh four year playing up or three years playing up? You aren't you like three years younger than Lou or four? I'm two years younger than him. So I think See, was, I, uh, I get I'm I'm great at math. It's uh, four yeah, out of three people are yeah. really good at it. Yeah, I think it was a couple of years up. Um, yeah, and it was it was it was a lot of fun actually. I remember, it was Essex Ravens and um, going to different tournaments. And um, I mean, anytime you, you play AAA and stuff, but anytime you play for your hometown, it's just so much more. Right. You know, the parents are having a better time and all that stuff. And um, yeah, Lou's dad was our coach, and um, he was helping coach out. And uh, there's a great group of guys on on that team, and and guys you see at high school and stuff. And then playing in high school, we actually. Uh, how it worked with my season. I couldn't play until later in the season. So, um, because when you play triple A in your draft year, you can't play, sorry, it wasn't my draft year, but I was sorry. I was playing my draft year, uh, playing a year up and then you weren't allowed to play high school hockey. So at the end of the year, I went and played with Lou on a line and we went to Offsa, and it was, uh, it was an awesome time. Like that was, that was, uh, I've played different levels of hockey, but that might've been one of the most enjoyable levels and tournaments and, and all that going into it. Because of the fun. gang that you were playing with? Just a group of guys. And, uh, like, I've known Lou forever, so to play with him and, um, like, Alex Guerin, these guys that you grew up with. And I was kind of um, – I'm a little bit – I'm obviously a year younger, but I'm removed because I, I was playing Sun County. They were playing Essex, Sun County. Um, Lou is a little bit older. Vice, right? you, lose, you don't play together and you just see each other. And then to kind of rekindle that and, and come back and play, it was, it was awesome. And um, just He's guys you see our high school too. too. Eh? Lou, yeah. Lou's a great and your buddy guy. there, your buddy there, Tyler Campbell was playing. He was oh yeah, so he was he was at an extra year of uh, so like stuff like guys my brother grew up with and I grew up with it. Once you get to high school, it was it was cool to play with everybody together. Yeah, yeah, yeah you and super good buddies. That's what he yeah. tells me. He's he's, yeah. he's a great guy. Love that guy. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like he had a rough go at the wedding though. <laughs> he's got a rough go going. <laughs> Why? What do you do? He, I'm surprised you weren't there whenever you're hanging out with him. <laughs> Rob's a badass sure influence. He, he got, he's, get, he's getting a little bit after it, but whatever. Who is it? Yeah. It's, a it's a wedding. It's a wedding. Yeah. Wedding. It's a wedding. You got to have a couple yeah. drinks and you start dancing. I don't. I'll just dance anyways, but <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever. Don't matter. Well, yeah, because when don't you have a couple drinks? Of beer? That's not it. <laughs> 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 it makes me sound really bad on his just I'm just kidding. I'm just, just fucking kidding. giving it to him. He's like, I'm just kidding. Partially. partially. Hey, and That's also, why I agreed to come and on. And all the, all the like on. one o'clock at, at, in the morning conversations I've had with this guy and the things that I could tell you about him, but I won't. <laughs> but he, he can sewer me and you know like that's that's what a professional podcast guy does. there you go right until until we get off the air then it's no holds barred yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> you yeah. mother that you guys will never hear <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's funny but all right I, pumps man good good luck oh, awesome rehab that knee we uh want yeah to see thanks, you back guys. healthy sniping and hopefully we can find a game over here to watch of yours so uh, that would be nice yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Glad you guys are doing well and everyone's uh, doing good. Healthy for now. For sure. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, buddy. For sure. And you guys are – We'll are, see what the hangover right? is tomorrow. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we know different from yesterday. <laughs> hey, but when you decide to retire from hockey, come back on the podcast and do it, do yeah, it with us. Yeah, for sure. That'd Let it rip. Awesome. That would be awesome. We'll, we'll, right, we'll do it at a we'll, – we'll find a bar to do it at. Yeah. yeah. Done. Like we'll do it. That was fun. We'll do it in Joe's backyard. There you go. Or we'll yeah, just do it at the go. spot we just had Ock Brover Fest. 
Oh man, what an amazing place that was. Where was that oh. at? I was sending yeah, the pictures was... on uh on yeah. our Snapchat. Uh, oh, with the right, right by Fox Glen. Yeah, right by Fox Glen. Yeah, okay. okay. Like not go. even a minute turn left. It's not even a minute down the road. Like nice, unbelievable nice. place. Unbelievable. Yeah. beauty. All right, Palms. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Take care, eh? Thanks, Pat.